Custom middleware is one of the important concepts of ASP.NET Core. With custom middleware, we can write our own logic and we can inject that into request processing pipeline. In ASP.NET Core, middleware are the components that are used to handle requests and responses. Middleware components are part of request processing pipeline. We have already discussed built-in middleware in our previous video. If you are interested, do check the playlist. As part of this series, we are building this to-do list of API. Here we have this program.cs file. Here you can see different middleware components. Here, uh, as you are all aware, program.cs file is the startup file. And you can see that we have configured different middleware components. Here, this use swagger and use swagger ui these are the built-in these are the built-in middleware components used to support swagger and here you can see that this is use static files middleware this middleware is used to source static files and this is a terminal middleware and we have one more middleware use https redirection and this use authorization these are the built-in middleware components available and we just have to use them in our application same way, we have an option to write our own custom middleware. In this video, we are going to see how to write our custom middleware and plug that middleware into the request processing pipeline. Custom middleware are user-defined components that are part of HTTP request and response pipeline. As discussed earlier, these are the different middleware components that are provided by ASP.NET Code Framework and they are ready to use. Then you would be thinking, why do we need custom middleware? Few of the use cases for custom middleware are, maybe you want to implement logging or you want to implement custom authentication and authorization. You want to add or modify caching rules or you want to do performance monitoring. There are many different cases. Whenever you want to add something extra to the request processing pipeline, then you can create your custom middleware and you can add it to the request processing pipeline. We have to follow few steps to create custom middleware. First step is to create a class for your middleware. This is our web API. First, I will create a folder. Let's add a class. I will name it as logging middleware so first step is done this class is empty we are going to make it custom middleware by adding few important stuff after creating a class we need to add important method that is invoke or we can go for invoke async which is asynchronous version of invoke method this method is very important First step is to add a constructor. This constructor will take few parameters. First parameter is request delegate. Even passing request delegate is important step of creating custom middleware. In case of custom middleware, this request delegate is very important. This request delegate allows middleware to invoke the next component in the request processing pipeline. I'm going to declare a private field, private. Let's make it read only. And see here we have declared this private field and we are going to assign this one to this private field. Next important method in the custom middleware is invoke method. See, this invoke method, if you want to go for asynchronous version, you can use invoke async method. Even this method plays crucial role in custom middlewares. Within this method, we actually implement middlewares logic. This method takes HTTP context as parameter. See, as this is our, as we are building logging middleware, in this method, we implement actual logging logic. For now, as our main focus is to understand custom middleware, I'm not worrying much about using iLogger or any, uh, or any other logging mechanism. I'm just logging my information to the console window. So I'm just uh, telling 
handling the request and I'm accessing. See, a main uh, focus is we can access the HTTP context using this when this parameter and I'm just taking some information and I'm logging. Let's see, we are done with handling incoming request. Next important step is to remember is now here the decision comes whether this middleware is going to be a terminal middleware or it is going to be or it is going to call next middleware in the pipeline. So this logging middleware is not a terminal middleware. This middleware is going to pass request to the next middleware in the request processing pipeline. We call next middleware by passing this HTTP context to the request delegate. Let's say here we have this request delegate that is next and we are going to pass this one. As this is a synchronous method, we are going to use this await keyword. This way, this will call next middleware in the pipeline. As we have seen in our previous step, calling next middleware in the pipeline is also one more important step of creating custom middleware. We can also log information after passing request to next middleware. I'm just pasting it here. So, this is our logging logic. After all this, our final step is to add this custom middleware to the request processing pipeline. Our custom middleware is ready. But this will not work until we add this middleware to the pipeline. How do we do that? We have to come to this program.cs file and we have to add this one to the request processing pipeline. How do we do this one? We use this instance app, then we call this method. We use middleware and we specify here. This is our locking middleware. This will add custom middleware to the request processing pipeline. Let's first run this application and see the response. Will this succeed it? We are able to see these endpoints. As we are going to log information to the console window, let's see the console window. I will run this one. See, here we are able to get the response. Let's inspect this. See, here this is this is how our console window looks before adding the middleware. I will uncomment this. This will add this logging middleware to the pipeline and I will run this again. I'm trying to run this application and we are getting this exception. This says invoke or invoke async does not return an object of type task. Here for this invoke async method, we have written async void, but it should be async task. Now I will run this again. See, this is our Swagger UI. Look at this window. See, this is the initial information. Along with this, now we have handling request Swagger index.html. And this has finished handling request. Again, uh, there is some request for Swagger.json. Again, this is finished handling the request. I will execute this endpoint again. Here, here we have a response. And in our logging window, here we have logged this request as well. This request is for API to do get all action method. This is how we can use custom middleware to implement custom logic. Just to quickly summarize, these are the important steps to follow while creating custom middleware. That's all for today's session. I hope the session was useful. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.